my family did have a lot of, you know, my father had a lot of, both my parents were smart. They weren't educated, but they had a lot of native intelligence. And my mother especially turned out to have a, some kind of a prodigious memory for song lyrics and for poetry. And you know, she just, things just stuck with her. She was permeable that way. And yes, I did go to Catholic school early and the nuns did um, pound things into us. We did not, we didn't, I don't remember diagramming sentences for more than a week. Um, but my, I started reading really um, pa um, passionately, quite young. I mean, I took to it quickly. And I, I remember the story I told at the library convention where I went with my older brother to the library, the Carnegie Library. And while I was waiting for him, the three children's books that I was allowed to check out, I went out on the front steps of the library and read them and then tried to return them and get three more. And it was beyond the librarians. They couldn't take a book back if they had just checked it out. So they called my brother over and said, and he just looked at me and said, it's time you moved up to J books. I guess that was the juvenile, they had J's on them. So we went into a new section and I was, wow. I, I used to check out these gigantic volumes of fairy tales, you know, mm -hmm. the, the purple fairy book, the pink fairy book, and haul them with me to first grade. You know? <laughs> and I remember the nun once, she was showing me off to some other nun, and she opened it and pointed out a word, and she said, what's that word? And I said, oh, when I come to a hard word, I just skip over it. <laughs> Can't do that anymore, not in my current profession. Um, I was... I was chosen in about fifth grade to take part in a Latin class that was just on Saturdays, and my father wouldn't let me. My father refused to let me take Latin, and I think it was because he was afraid I would become a nun, or <laughs> or he was afraid that I would just be, you know, too much of an egghead to find a man and also he had when he was a, a young man when he was an adolescent he had he had gotten kicked out of three different high schools and got in some kind of trouble with the police in the neighborhood and my grandmother his mother sent him to the farm in Ontario Canada where he had where she had a brother she was originally from this place called Reed Ontario and that that brother would be my great uncle my father's uncle had gone to the seminary and he almost became a Jesuit but way at the last minute he went over the wall I think is the expression so he had a classical education and he was always telling my father stories of Sisyphus and my father as a young man hated that stuff <laughs> so I think he thought he was protecting me from keep by keeping me from the classics but when I got to high school finally I took French I could have taken Latin, and by that time I had to figure it out that my father didn't want me to take Latin, so I didn't. Um, but I loved getting the experience in foreign languages and seeing how, that's how I first saw how grammar worked. Mm -hmm. When I went to college, I took a year, a year of German. I wanted to take Latin at some point there, too, after taking a linguistics course, and the linguistics professor talked me out of it. He said that it would only teach me more about English. And now I'm, well, what's wrong with that? Why well, should I have learned more about English? But he persuaded me that I should study a language where I, that, that I could speak if I travel, you know, go somewhere and speak it. So, so between reading and learning um, the ins and outs of grammar through studying French and then German, and later I studied Spanish, and what happened was I did travel. I went to England and I felt so foreign there that I was determined I was going to learn the language or at least study the language of anywhere that I traveled so that I wouldn't feel so totally alienated.